How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with... Unboxing? Not really an unboxing. I'm Well, it's in a box and stuff are coming out of it, so it is an unboxing, but you can see it's already open. So I'm not a beer mail. Uh, it's an unboxing of uh, riches, of spoils, of war, actually. Not really, but uh, uh, yeah, a little bit different. Um, this is uh, box one of five I'll be doing on this channel. For what reason? This is fantasy football winnings. That's right. Um, I belong to a couple fantasy football leagues, and uh, not too many. Actually, I, I fought that uh, that uh, thing, fought the whole fantasy football thing for years. And then about a while ago, like eight years ago, one of my my uh, brothers like, oh, could you please join my fantasy football league? We need a tenth person. Joined it. Won. Um, a couple of years later, a friend of mine, she joined her fantasy football league in our pool. She worked at a university. She's like, I have no idea. Can you, can you? Do it for me? And I was like, sure, I'll do it for you. One. Um, but subsequently, since um, the past three years, I have been in uh, three fantasy leagues. Well, two fantasy leagues and three and then three over the past three years. And I got a really good record. Uh, I'm like five out of ten. So I win half the championships, if that math is correct. I don't know. But anyway, I crush it. Yeah, that's called smug posting right there. Or humble rags. Anyway, longer story, longer um, I belong to a couple leagues, and some of them are just cash and regular leagues, but I belong to a regular beer league. Uh, and by that I mean there's a bunch of us who are in a local beer group, and we join every year. This is the third year. The first year I came in third, second year I came in fourth, this year I actually won a championship. And how it breaks down is uh, everybody, there's uh, 12 players, and everybody has to put up $50 worth of beer. Um, $50 worth of beer, it all has to be brewery only beer. Uh, brewery that, you know, closely brewery only. It could be stuff you can find on a shelf, but, you know, not readily available. And it has to be $50 worth of retail beer. So, uh, like, you know, if someone gets a bottle and they're like, oh, on a secondary market it costs 100 bucks. Well, if you pay 10 bucks, it costs 10 bucks. And then if you give people IPAs and it has to be less than a couple weeks old. Uh, so that is the whole shtick of it. And, um, you know, it's a, just a 14 playoff. Went in, uh, made it the championship, and won five boxes of beer. So I figured what I'd do is I'd do an unboxing of uh, all my winnings. This is the first one that's been delivered to me. As you can see, it's open. You can see some beers kind of sticking out of the top here. I don't know about anything that's in here yet, other than I know one of the beers is a Jackie O's beer, because I could see the cap on it. All the other stuff, no idea what it's going to be. So I figured these will go in kind of um, uh, spurts, you know, because I'm going to get these over, um, you know, a couple week or two period of time, people will find time to deliver them and all that stuff. And I figured at first I was like, I'll wait till I get them all and I'll do one big unboxing thing, but it could take a couple weeks and that means I'm going to have big old boxes of beer kind of cluttering up my whole house. So I'm going to split these up, record them each and every time, splice them all together. You guys get to watch. So there you go. Longer intro, even longer. Let's dive in. So let's see what we got. Box number one via my buddy Jerry. Jerry, awesome dude. Uh, super big Steeler fan. Uh, big soccer fan. Liverpool fan. Suck it, Jerry. He just crushed my uh, arsenal. But uh, yeah, he delivered this first. He is a... Uh, we're brothers from another mother when it comes to barley wine. So he told me there's probably going to be a decent amount of barley wine in here. So first things first, we'll pull out that Jackie O's. Oh, I haven't had this one yet. This is Jackie O's Brewing. It's their double barrel black maple. It's an imperial of maple porter aged in bourbon barrels. And then aged in cinnamon vanilla whiskey barrels. Hot damn, motherfucker. Black maple is one of our favorite releases to release each year. For the special batch, black maple was aged eight months in bourbon barrels. The beer was racked out of bourbon barrels and into cinnamon vanilla whiskey barrels. Where it aged for another ten additional months. A bold display of barrel time, oxidation, and evaporation, lately carbonation, uh, lately carbonated, sorry, and intended to be enjoyed at room temperature. Nice. Is there a year in this one? They usually say the year on some of these Jackie O's bottles. I don't see one. I could be on oh, 2018 right there. But yeah. Jackie O's has one of the better apparel programs in the whole country as far as I'm concerned. So that's pretty good fucking start off right there so let's see what we have we have this looks oh, this little fancy oh barreled soles nice little jammer these guys are up just outside of portland maine um and i haven't had anything from these guys in a while so i'm excited to give it a whirl um this is their big bang uh this was actually bottled uh a year ago almost to the day kind of creepily um it's bottled 76 100 and it's 11 11.9 percent barley wine 
I think that's it. That's, I think that's all I'm going to get on there. There's probably, and there could be adjuncts involved, a whole bunch of other things. Um, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't actually say it on the label itself. But, yeah, that's Kill Label. I love their kind of, from like, Italian-style kind of shaped glasses. But that's a pretty-ass beer, isn't it? So there you go. Getting those Bali wines, baby. With the red capper here. Ooh, we got the double. Double, uh, ooh. Let's see, we have here, um, Big Bang, Woodward, okay. So this is their Big Bang, okay, here we go. This is their Big Bang, it, and it just says that, and then bottled it, so I assume it's just their barley wine. Over here we have Big Bang, and it says barrel, it says Woodward Reserve, and it says barrel age 11 months and 25 days, so just short of one year. So basically, this is going to be the same, hmm, Okay. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to think of this is a 210 of 600. 13.2% alcohol by volume. They're almost, this one was bottled um, just about a month later than this one, uh, which means they were kind of brewed at separate times. But um, you have a little bit of a double barley wine craziness going on there. It's going to have to be a side by side review of that. And that's going to be, it's going to get drunk out that night. So, oh, see, this is what, see, Jerry. Uh, gets a lot of beers from Pittsburgh. And he said there was going to be barley wines in there, so I was kind of hoping for a couple of these. And that is your some barrel aged gratitude. Or no, this is just their base gratitude. This is a barley wine uh, from uh, Pittsburgh. I've been wanting to review this for quite some time, actually. It's uh, it's one of my favorite barley wines. I've just never had a bottle to myself. It's always been at shares and things like that. And uh, yeah, East End Gratitude. Such a great label. They do the. Uh, the older bottles are kind of these paper wrap bottles, the barrel aged bottles. A lot can change in 12 years, 11% alcohol by volume. There's story time in the back there. I am not going to read all that for you um, and just make this video way longer than it needs to be because it's already going to be gigantically long. I'm just trying to see if there's an actual date on this. I'm assuming it's going to be 2018. Hopefully it's uh, maybe a little bit uh, 12 years. Oh no, it's 2016 then. I think. It says a lot can change in 12 years, and then it says, think back to what Pittsburgh beer scene was like in 2004. So they're talking about 12 years, you know, that would make it 2016, so it makes this a couple years old already, so that's pretty awesome. I've always loved their label, like I said, the paper wrapped ones are fantastic, but you can see that's pretty damn, uh, kind of a little label going on there. Tuck that sucker over here. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be another one, because a lot wax looks very similar. Um, no, it's not the same beer, and pa, pa, pa. it's a voodoo brew, uh, brewing beer. It says, uh, let's see, caution contains real pumpkin. So it's their pumpkin beer. It's the Barrel Room Collection Barley Wine, 11% alcohol by volume, brewed and aged on pumpkin, Madagascar, vanilla beans, and cinnamon and bourbon barrels. Uh, there's story time over here. Let's read this one. It's not that long. We at Voodoo Brewing, I take uh, over two decades of Matt's brewing experience and our quirky personalities, wrap them into a line of beers oriented around what we feel is fun, flavorful, thoughtful, thought-provoking. We hope you enjoy them. Um, let's see. Enjoy responsibly. It says here, 10 3, 18. So it's actually newer. The label kind of comes off like it's like old school OG style. Uh, but it looks like it's, uh, yeah. Looks like it's a, this year's pumpkin barley wine. <laughs> so yeah, barely pumpkin barley wine. I can get down with that. And then we have two cans in here of ooh, little Dancing Gnome Jammers. Actually, this is, looks like a collab we have here. Infinite Highway. Um, Dancing Gnome Pittsburgh PA. Okay, it's not a collab. For some reason, I thought it was. 8% alcohol by volume. Uh, this B... Ba, 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 ba. I mean, it's 8%, so I assume it's a double IPA of some form or fashion. So, Dancing Gnome usually has killer pillar labels so yeah that and one more little jammer can of that's funny i swear to god i did not look in here at all it's jam so it's a little actual jammer jam it's their mosaic jam dancing gnome 6.8 percent alcohol by volume and this is an american ale do they have that written on here this is american ale so yeah pale ale i'm assuming or ipa and the light day, that's my guess. So that'd be that. That's all you need. So there you go. First round of my sweet, delicious fantasy football winnings in the books. Uh, like I said, there's going to be four more of these. That's four, not four. Four. Four more of these coming up. So, uh, yeah, you're going to see me ensconced in a whole bunch of deliciousness. So thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you for everybody that played fantasy this year. And thank you to me for winning.
because that can be smug as fuck. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this unboxing. unboxing. Hopefully you enjoyed the rest of them. We'll see you. We're back with the second edition of my fantasy football haul. So let's dive into it. Go straight to it. I don't have to give you the explanations and stuff other than one beer off five people. I had to get five boxes of beer from five people. Each thrown in 50 bucks worth of beer. These are actually three of those people I ended up consolidating because I live out of the area now. I had three of the guys kind of uh, meet up together and drop off a box of one of the guys. Uh, so my uh, my buddies and league mates, um, Charles, uh, Brandon, and, uh, and Kevin kind of combined together and they dropped it off today. So I have one more box coming. So this is three here. And we'll give you the old lowdown. As you can see, two... One can, one bottle. Didn't make it in the box, I guess, because there's no room. I haven't looked what else is in here. I kind of have an idea of some of the stuff. But uh, first things first, Trillium, PM done. It's Kakao edition. Always love me some Trillium. That doesn't suck. So, yeah, nice little added bonus. And then we have the old eh, 2015 Sukaba. I know, um, you know, in the whole whale slayer version of beer today, Sukaba... It's kind of like a meh, whatever. It's still one of my favorite beers, and it's one of my favorite ageable beers. So again, a 2015 version does not suck. So, yeah, that I don't know which ones came from which. Actually, I might, but um, let's kind of cut this open here. There's not much tape here. Give that old thing. Here's a little uh, holy shit. This is, oh, shippers, man, I hate shippers. Ugh. So let's move this over here. Let's see. We can do a little bit of uh, finagling. Oh, I think there's a, there's a bottle of beer in here that I already have. Nah, eh, that's okay. Such is life. Let's start with the cans. Hmm. What do we have here? We have oh, one of the tasties from um from uh. Why am I blanking on it? Is it Vale? No. Yeah. No. Who the hell is it again? Do, 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 do. The veil. It is the veil. Why did I blank on that? Anyway, this is their tasty. This is uh, dub blackout tasty. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've reviewed one of these. I forget which one it was, but I kind of dug it. They're a little bit more kind of beer adjacent beers. They're not necessarily beer. It's more kind of like fruit slushy with beer kind of adjacent overtones. But that's a fun one to kind of dive into. So there you go. Can number one. Can number two. We have a little dented jam of a cacao. P.M. Dalton. Got another one of those. So, yeah. Getting all the P.M. Dons. Look at that. Three in a row. A little three banger. Nothing wrong with that. Next up, we have a little bit of P.B. in Thursday from the brewery. Um, let's see. It's Imperial Salad Asian Burn Barrels with peanut flour added. This is only 19.8% alcohol by volume, so it's a session beer. And that'd be that. This is, uh, what year is this? 2016 edition. There you go. Uh, this could explode or be delicious. We don't know. That's part of the fun of aged beers. So kind of excited for that. Oh, plus, I always love getting uh, getting some aged stuff. I'm super excited for this. This is Brick City, Silk City. Um, this is uh, Imperial Style Asian Burn Barrels, 2017 edition. I've heard really good things about this beer. So I'm kind of excited to dive into it. Wow, this is pretty fucking cool. Brick City, not too far away from me. They're like 50 minutes away from me now here in Jersey. So, yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, getting sexy now. Next up, we have a little bit, a little bit of the puss in your life. A little bit of Hunapoo's. This is the 2017 edition of Hunapoo. Uh, Hunapoo is one of those kind of like good um, litmus tests when it comes to aging beer. Uh, when I talk about aging beer, I have this kind of... Um, I don't want to say theory. It's a mantra. It's a lot of people applied to it. So it's not unique to me in that you should age. Um, certain beers age better than others. And the less moving parts available, the better they age. And you're talking about, okay, we're talking about an imperial stout with a whole bunch of kind of adjuncts thrown at it. So it, you don't really want to sit on Hootapoo all that long. It's good to have it for a couple of years. So 2018. You know, a year and a half. That's not going to do it all that bad. But it's a beer that I usually don't wait too long on for aging. So it's cool to kind of get it as in when that super amount of age on it. Um, let's see. What do we have here? A little bit of Angry Chair Krampus. Um, it says here, uh, Hide your kids. Drink fresh. Do not age. This is... I don't know what's in this. It just says Imperial Sweet Stout. 
So I'm sure there's bits and pieces in Baja and all kinds of crazy shit floating around in that sucker. Typical cool angry chair artwork. But yeah, let's kind of stack these over there, make a little bit of room. So not too shabby so far. Do, 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 do. Civil disobedience. Okay. A uh, little horror. Hill Farm said never never sucks to grab some of those. Civil disobedience is our nonviolent protest against the homogenization of flavor. Um, Sears Beard Micro. I forget what. This is batch 21. I forget. 2016. So she has some time on her. I forget what batch 21 is. Um. As far as this goes, it was actually text to me. The actual batches is one of the ones I know about. So I'm going to be kind of like in the dark with that one. So you guys can look it up. And hey, look at that. Wouldn't it be another one? And this is a batch 22. So yeah, two little civ civil disobedience back to back. Ooh, a little bit of uh, brewery only release. Nice. A little bit of Avery. This is Do It Con Conch Barrel Age Coconut Porter. Mm, I just reviewed a coconut porter right before I hit film on this. This is actually, mmm, oh, just a bit over two years old. Uh, it's a bur porter aged in bourbon barrels with coconut spices and pumpkin added. So it's a pumpkin beer. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. I think that's it. Where's the EBV in the sucker? The usual, oh, well, nah, just a paltry 18.62. Yeah, so you have that. Oh, good God. This is the one I believe I already have, and it is. You guys actually see me review this sucker, so that one is no secret. And Okay. Jester King Derivation. <laughs> or Derivator. De de derivator? I'm butchering that. All you fucking super crazy beer nerds out there that kind of love your names to be said correctly. Well, I am not doing that right now. Derator. <laughs> Man, I'm horrible at this. Derivator. I'm going to. Man, why can't I say words sometimes? Um, it's 5.7% uh, alcohol by volume. Basically, it looks like a wheat beer. Uh, note, Servitor is... Three to four. Man, I want to say it so bad, but I'm not going to rush ahead. Is a dry-inspired farmhouse ale fermented with raspberries, all already once used in fermentation of Jester King. Uh, Mamonsari vs. Blanton. Native yeast and bacteria impart a sense of unfiltered and pasteurized, 100% naturally conditioned beer. So that'd be cool. Hopefully that sucker isn't too... Um, to whatever another and that's pretty much it that's my haul so far for the old fantasy football like i said i actually have one more coming um but that, yeah that doesn't suck to win to win to win huzzah to winning uh but yeah that's that's not too shabby for you know 50 dollars buy-in for um fantasy football league so that's uh four boxes down thank you very much jerry thank you very much brandon thank you very much Charles. Thank you very much, Kevin. There's another Kevin floating around there, too. Um, yeah. That are going to, uh, yeah, enjoy the shit out of this. Review some. Enjoy, uh, share some others. But there you go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy part two, which should come up right after this. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers. And we're back for the last part of the whole fantasy football winnings. It's uh, been a while. Um, actually filmed the first parts of the other two, uh, like in January, late January, -ish. this is now May. Um, well, actually it's the end of April to be fair. And I just got this one today. One of the guys that's in the fantasy football league lives, um, a few States away. Uh, he moved to, um, to a different area of the country not too long ago. Tried to coordinate kind of meeting up when he was in town for family. It didn't happen. So he ended up shipping it out. So took a little bit longer, um, than, uh, than the other ones, but hey. You eventually get beer. So let's see what's in the sucker. So be, this will be the last part of five boxes that I'm doing. Um, and this one is courtesy of Kevin, who, uh, yeah, me and him went kind of down to the wire, I believe, on the old fantasy football winning. So we'll see what's what. I actually ended up paying him last year. Um, was it last year or the year before uh, we went into the kind of finals game? And I had to... Uh, and I had to pay him specifically, so we'll see what this has to offer. Got a couple different jams in here. 
uh, we'll just go beer by beer because this is actually in a proper shipper so we don't have to really unwrap much of anything the first one we had is from dunham brewing um dunham out of quebec canada uh this is a blx funk i don't know what that means uh it's a it looks like it's a grisette uh, um, I don't know actually what is going on in this, but it, the fucking label is absolutely super fucking killer. Yeah, so Brasserie Dunham, probably Quebec. I can't read French, but it obviously says gr Grisette and it's Asian Fooders, and I believe there's rhubarb in it. So we'll see what's what. That's a pretty killer label. So you Canadian fellas out there, I know you're watching. Let me know what's what about this one. I actually have no idea. Never heard of that brewery before. Next up, we have Whack. Um, this is an Imperial Coffee Style. Uh, it is another um, Canadian jam. No Science Brasserie. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, Papa Katsum, the preference. They want me to drink this before July 2019. Um, Beer Artisanal, Referment Boutile. Um, yeah, no idea about this. So, basically, Imperial Coffee Style. Cool label on that one. Not as cool as this one, but can't all be winners, so, yeah, label-wise at least. Beer-wise, what else do we have here? Ah, Bourbon Barrel Aged Framing Hammer. Okay, I'm down for some of that. I haven't had a Bourbon Barrel Aged Framing Hammer. This is the uh, Scraped Vanilla Bean version, independently owned and operated. Um, don't know what year this is. That's new labeling, I believe it is. And uh, bah, 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 five liters, Jack's Abbey. Yeah, I haven't had a... Uh, uh, a uh, frame hammer in quite some time, so I'm kind of excited to give it a whirl. I know Jack's Abbey just um, just started uh, distroing um, in Jersey, brr, God, almost uh, this month, I believe. So we'll see what's what there. Game over. It's a triple barrel atomic golden sour. Holy shit balls. Um, it's a barrel culture. Okay. And it's an aged American sour, sour ale aged in red wine barrels with mixed fruit. So you're talking about game over triple barrel atomic golden sour. I assume this is going to be just enamel ripping craziness. We'll see what's what. And that's cool. It's got a kind of, you know, video game, you got little Pac-Man ish things going on up there. All kinds of bits and pieces. So that's a pretty cool label. Yeah. Maybe they all can be winners. Well, Let's see what this one has. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's a Little Brett uh, Deep Blackberry. This is Golden Sour Ale Age in Oak Barrels with Blackberries from Crooked Stave. Crooked Stave, I love all their beers. I don't think I've ever had a bad Crooked Stave, so it'll be cool to dive into this one. And it's Golden Sour Age in Oak Barrels with Blackberries. A whole lot of barrel age goodness going on. And last but not least, this one does not want to come out. And we have here... This is, oh, one of the cycle jams. This is uh, Pecan Pie a la Mode. It's a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout with uh, pecan or pecans for your people. I so weird. I actually don't know which one's the one to make fun of. Um, <laughs> and vanilla. Uh, just drink fresh, do not age, and it's cycle brewing. When I've talked about previously, I'm talking about how a bunch of us from where I used to live, we used to go and do cycle beers um, uh, kind of shares. We used to hook up and actually kind of, just chug cycle beers and that would be the impetus for kind of doing a um a bottle share and kevin was one of them would always kind of facilitate the uh cycle so it's no surprise i came in there so there you go the end of the uh of the fantasy football winnings yeah it was not a, not too shabby of a whole whole bunch of good stuff i'm not gonna lie all this looks fucking fantastic i mean all the beers i got fantastic i posted a bunch of reviews already of the stuff that i had um, over the past uh, couple of months, but there's still some more stuff um, to be posted from those. And these are super intriguing, especially the Canadian ones. For some reason, I got a little soft spot in my heart for all the Canadian jams. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little, uh, I don't know, it's not a beer mail. It's more of a beer haul from being King Shit of Fuck Mountain fantasy football wise, at least for one year. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed me reviewing the ones I've already done and watch me review the rest of these because almost certainly a bunch of these will get the old review treatment. And uh, hopefully see you next time. Cheers.